I recognise that there has been a surge of discontent this year, so I am really glad to be here today to talk about that and about any aspects of inspection and accountability that you want to talk to me about. We were told in, in one session that uh, the complaint system amounts to Ofsted marking its own homework. Now, I, I understand that you have um, put forward a number of uh, potential reforms or changes. Um, how will that consultation process you engaged in, how will it address some of those criticisms? When, when do you think the consultation will be published and, and the sort of potential timetable for any implementation? There's a few things here, because first of all, we do, and throughout my time at Ofsted, have taken complaints incredibly seriously. Um, we've had an external review system in place throughout that time, ICASO, which is run by the Centre for Dispute Re Resolution and commissioned by DFE, and their reports um, have been consistently very positive indeed about our work. Their most recent report um, s um, said that they found that we had dealt with um, 14 out of the 18 cases that went to them in, in line with the published complaints procedure. And overall, they had no advice or recommendations to make about improving the service. We disagree with the proposals around the ICASO process. We don't think that works. It's a toothless organisation. It has no power to make um, binding recommendations on Ofsted. And the biggest problem uh, with the complaints process is our members don't have any confidence in it whatsoever. Um, the, the responses to complaints are formulaic, they're generic, and they're opaque. Um, and too often, Ofsted complaints handlers um, respond by saying they haven't got enough evidence to make a decision. Um, and it's very difficult, then, to achieve any change in a report unless uh, you um, go for something that's very costly, and that would be a judicial review normally. So at the heart of the issue about Ofsted's complaints process is that it's not independent. Ofsted yeah. continues to mark its own homework. Right. And we think, as a public body, um, Ofsted need to be able to have a completely independent um, process that can substantively rule on the judgments made by an inspection team. And allied to that is the lack of access to the, to the inspector's notes. We understand the GDPR pits around that. But it's very hard for a school to understand if it's complaint has been satisfactorily addressed if the evidence base is not, not released. And a final point, really, I think, is um, Ofsted doesn't have any process to ensure it's meeting its public equality duty around complaints either. So we would like to see Ofsted tracking um, equalities issues, and particularly around disability and diversity, in its complaints too. I mean, uh, just completely supportive of uh, what Ian has just uh, <coughs> said. Uh, I mean, our long-held position is that the Ofsted um, complaints procedure should be external um, uh, to the organisation because we can't have a, a, an ongoing situation of marking your own homework. It just isn't transparent. We're very open about how we work and highly responsive to feedback. And we have strong post-inspection processes where we're always willing to consider that we may have got it wrong. Um, we use what we call gathering additional evidence when we, when we think that part or all of an inspection wasn't as good as it should have been. Um, we will send out an inspector or a team um, to redo it. And before it ever becomes a final inspection report, that, um, that has been redone. When a school feels that judgment is unfair, the process of Ofsted complaints is very, very... Um, uh, untransparent. It's, it's really, really difficult to get a, a complaint overturned. And when um, a school does complain, we often hear they don't get very good feedback on uh, why their complaint has not been upheld. Um, and I think that all adds to the stress of the system because it means actually whatever judgment you get and you, you know, you're told at the end of day two of the inspection this is the likely outcome, you, you realistically know that you've got very little chance of that being overturned. Ofsted, we know we're waiting for a response from Ofsted on um, the recent consultation on, on the, the complaints process, um, and I think many of the proposals in there will go some way to help that, but I think we really need to look at uh, reforming that complaints process, making that much more transparent, um, and making it much easier for schools to, um, to, to raise concerns particularly about uh, a, a judgment. The complaint system at Ofsted is problematic too, uh, which is currently what schools have got in order to be able to feedback if they're not happy. But there's a point that I think it's important to understand is that 
inspection judgments have to be made by sort of trained practicing judges in just the same way that within the court system you can only get things um, looked at again by other judges you can't substitute your own opinion or your lawyer's opinion for that of the judges and we have the same issue with Ofsted um, that we can and do move things away from the original inspector and inspection team when we need to gather additional evidence for example we send people entirely unconnected with the original with the original inspection but what we can't do is is simply say well anybody can substitute their judgment what recourse then is there to the original evidence base on which some of those judgments or comments were made because i think one particular detail was around the access to inspectors notes is that something that you recognize by way of challenge there are there are situations where it is difficult where, where, where it is difficult um, to to give um, people challenges every every detail because there are there are some confidential conversations um, where you will be betraying um, personal details about individuals and sometimes individuals very difficult circumstances for example about conversations with parents um, we do think it's important that, pe that, 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 that parents can tell inspectors mm -hmm. honestly and openly about about concerns they have um, and sometimes there are so quite difficult dynamics um, that mean that if all of that information is going to be hand handed straight to the head they will not speak honestly to inspectors so we so we try mm. and navigate that no, to be as open as we can without betraying my major I might just use the opportunity to talk about a slightly different form of complaint um, which is obviously complaint to Ofsted rather than about Ofsted mm. and that wasn't included in the consultation and I don't think it was included in, in this committee's um, questions but that's a, a huge concern we we hear a lot from members because of the changes to uh, GDPR laws and data protection, if a student or a parent or a member of the public complain about a school, and it is what's called a qualifying complaint, so Ofsted then say they will go in and look at that particular issue for an urgent inspection, um, they cannot identify the student or parent. So the school gets phoned up and told, you have an urgent inspection. Um, because there's been a qualifying complaint, the school says, well, what's a qualifying complaint? And also to say, well, we can't tell you that because that would identify you <coughs> and concerned. Uh, also, the school, that's deeply uh, stressful. Very, very hard to then um, provide evidence, you know, when you're trying to get evidence the day before about what that complaint might be regarding um, and therefore um, mitigate it. Um, and I have a lot of sympathy for Ofsted here because, of course, those parents and, and students can't be identified, but we have to look at a better process by which qualifying complaints about a school happen and how an urgent inspection is triggered. Ian? Uh, so in terms of the Ofsted consultation, we support the idea of enhanced dialogue, and Ofsted has gone some way to do that in the current inspection handbook as well, which is helpful. It's, it's inserted a, a piece into that. And we uh, advise our members to raise complaints during an inspection, uh, and to be very clear about what that is and to put that in writing to the inspector if it's not uh, uh, satisfactory, satisfactorily resolved. Um, but that's quite tough. It's quite difficult and it's a matter of judgment as to how you think it's going to affect the conduct of the inspection. So there's a risk with challenge. We think it's useful that there's an opportunity to raise some concerns the next day, but actually once the inspectors have left the school site, it's often too late really.